I'm Veronica Vance. Coming up, we head down river to relax at three riverside parks. We visit the Nautical Mile in St. Clair Shores, and then we sample the goods at three sweet treat places unique to the D, so stay tuned. Production funding for this program was made possible by the Detroit Metro Convention and Visitors Bureau, driving tourism growth in Metro Detroit since 1896. More information is available at visitdetroit.com. I just love the Detroit River because it's such a gem that we have here and it's a huge part of what makes Detroit, Detroit. And I can't think of a better way to spend a lazy day than relaxing Riverside. Just people watching, boat watching, and taking it all in. So that's what we're going to do today. What I want to show you today is a way to experience the river in a more relaxed and, most importantly, free way. We're going to concentrate on three areas along the river where you don't have to spend any money to enjoy the sights. A few stops where you can bring the family or friends from out of town and not have to reach into your wallet. Now the river stretches a long way, so today we're going to concentrate on three downriver portions of the river. So the downriver area of the D consists of the suburbs that are situated closest to the river and south of downtown, thus downriver. And today we're going to start right here in Wyandotte at Bishop Park. Bishop Park is a great spot. I love that you can just pull up and park for free and then you can get out and walk along this great river walk, stroll casually and you're right up close to the Detroit River. It is so relaxing. The park opens at 6 a.m. and doesn't close until 10 p.m. and it's located between Elm and Vinewood streets off of Jefferson Ave or otherwise known as Biddle Ave in downtown Wyandotte. And by the way, the view across the river looks at Canada so you get an international view. If you want to do a little fishing, there's plenty of opportunity to get your pole in the water because there's even a huge fishing pier and everyone is welcome on the fishing pier. It's not just restricted to fishing. Now Bishop Park is a park. It's a 12.2 acre park park so it's huge. There's plenty of room here. They've got picnic shelters, great for family reunions, a playground, there's even a concession stand. And the park is easily accessible right off of downtown Wyandotte. And by the way, downtown Wyandotte is wonderful. It's known as the heart of Downriver. There's plenty of shops and restaurants, art and culture. So if you do have the urge to take a break from the river, the entire downtown district is only a few steps away. Now just a little farther south of downtown Wyandotte and south of Eureka Road, you'll come to another riverside destination, BASF Waterfront Park. And this place is huge, it's 20 acres. There's a lot that makes this park really unique, and aside from the incredible views which look out onto the island of Gros Seal, they have these lookout docks that jut out into the river to give you that immersive perspective. And the rocky shoreline makes it feel as if the river is coming right up to you and tempts you to just sit on the edge and catch the river breezes. Look at this great promenade. It spans the length of the park and it's surrounded by trees as well as art sculptures and statues. In the evening when the sun is setting, the lamp posts cast a warm glow over the whole area and it gives the place a really romantic feel. But amidst all of this, you can still get in some great exercise because the park has a rowing launch as well as sand volleyball courts. It's so easy to pass the time here and get lost in the breezes coming off of the river. Our last destination is Elizabeth Park and it's located in Trenton which is just the next town south of Wyandotte and you can find your way here either off Elizabeth Street or Riverside Drive in downtown Trenton. Elizabeth Park is fantastic and it's the biggest of the three parks we've covered today with 162 acres and over 1300 feet of river walk. What do you enjoy most about Elizabeth Park? The events, meeting a lot of people, watching everyone fish, being able to walk with a beautiful view. All right, well, I'll let you get back to your stroll. Thank you. Okay, thank you. <laughs>
The whole park is a charm to visit. There are bridges throughout the park that cross over river canals, and like the other two parks we visited, there are plenty of recreational activities, from playgrounds for the kids, to biking, to plenty of chill out time. So what's really great is you don't have to wait for the warm weather to enjoy the Detroit River. These riverside destinations are amazing all year long and they take on a totally different vibe during the winter months. So make sure to check out these gems. You'll discover a whole new and calming way to enjoy the D. I'm in St. Clair Shores along the Nautical Mile, and this area is really the gem of the deep. We've got restaurants, we've got retail, and of course the beautiful water. And it's all right here on Jefferson between 9 and 10 miles. But before we delve into all the restaurants, we're going to make a first stop at Gifts Afloat, where it's everything nautical you could ever need, and it's all top-notch quality stuff. Come on. Well, I love all this nautical themed gift wear. It makes me feel like I'm on vacation, but I'm actually right here in the D, right in St. Clair Shores. But doesn't this like remind you, oh, you go away, I want to bring a little piece of something back, the cute little seashell lamps. Well, Don, I'm so excited to be on the mile, nautical mile. It's such a gem out here in St. Clair Shores. It certainly is. We are just one mile from 10 to 9 on Jefferson Avenue. Mm -hmm. We have five marinas, 
We have about 10 major restaurants with a lot of smaller ones, delis, so forth. Mm -hmm. It's just fun. We're on the water. We do have a lot of transient boaters. They come in from Ohio, Canada, from all over. It's like a resort area. We have the Greek. We have the Mediterranean. We have the Mexican. And have seafood. The, oh, absolutely. Well, Donna, I'm going to go check out some of these restaurants. We're going to start our journey of these restaurants along Nautical Mile at, well, I can't think of a better place than at the beginning. We're at Fishbones Rhythm Cafe. They're right at the southernmost part at Nine Mile in Jefferson along Nautical Mile. And let's go in and see what they're all about. Now don't be fooled by the name, Fishbone serves up more than just seafood. They also have thick juicy steaks and freshly prepared sushi. And they do it all with a little Cajun kick by bringing a part of New Orleans right up to here in the D. Yeah, they do have alligator on the menu. So tell me, how do you like Fishbone? Fishbone's a great restaurant. We come here often. Yeah. And we love the food here. We like the ambiance. I mean, the bar behind me. I mean, it's always full of people. This is a great outdoor area. It's yeah, like this it own little oasis right here food. off of Jefferson. Speaking to the great variety that the Nautical Mile has of restaurants, we are now inside Rojo Mexican Bistro, which serves fresh, contemporary, and delicious Mexican entrees. At the end of a hard week, we know we can come here and get good quality food, a great atmosphere. It's just, it's consistent and it's fun. I love the view. Cheers, I'll let you get back Cheers. to your Friday evening. Thank you. <laughs> I'm now at an island hideaway right here on the Mile, also known as Waves. It's a chill and grilled restaurant that serves island-inspired food that's been influenced by the Caribbean, Cuba, Key West, and even Hawaii. Everyone is so friendly. The food is excellent. The people are great. It's like you're on a vacation away from home. Yeah, an island getaway. Then I understand, too, that this whole bar area turns into a real happening place at nighttime. Yes, it does. Oh, on the my goodness. You will have so much fun here. <laughs> All right, well, I'll be looking for you on the dance floor. <laughs> Now I'm at Brownies on the Lake, and they are literally out on the lake. Now this place was closed for a number of years, but now they've come back with an El Primo location. And of course, they've got wonderful seafood here, but because they're also affiliated with Andiamo, they also have excellent Italian. If you decide to eat indoors at Brownies, they've got a great nautical theme. But look at this. Just to attest how fresh their seafood is, they've got a raw bar right here on display. Probably caught today. You guys come here a lot? Oh, we come here a lot. We came here last summer. They have bands out here and, yeah. you know, free docking and we bring our boat here every summer and it's, it's a great time. Mm -hmm. Food's great here and we have a wonderful time when we come here. Now Steve's Back Room is another great example of the variety of restaurants that they have along the mile. They serve fine Mediterranean food and spirits here, but they also have this really great deli counter with things that are made right here on the premises. They've got tzatziki sauce, grape leaves, and look at this, jalapeno cilantro hummus. How delicious does that sound? Mmm, get some of that to go. The reason that I come here all the time is because the food is fresh. And, it, and it's Arabic food. It's some of the best food in town, you're, oh, yeah. you were saying. Oh, yeah, it's the best food. And now we're off to the Greek Isles at the Pegasus Restaurant. Now, they claim they serve the food of the gods, but of course, one of my favorites is Saganaki, also known as the Flaming Thief. Opa! Opa! I'm here from New Orleans. Drove all the way up here just to see what it was all about. My friend Pete, my brother John from New Orleans also came up to visit. Here we are, Pegasus on the nautical mile. We love Pegasus! And last but not least is Pat O'Brien's Tavern right on the corner of Jefferson and Ten Mile. Now their claim to fame is that they serve the best perch in town. They've got 16 different beers on draft and of course they've got that awesome patio outside lined with TVs to watch all the sporting events on. And, and do you enjoy the food here too? Oh, I love the food here. Yeah? Very good. Just a nice place to come and relax. Yep, yep. Start your weekend off right. Come down here to get some eat. Enjoy a drink. Enjoy a drink. <laughs> all right. Nautical Mile right in St. Clair Shores on Jefferson between 9 and 10 miles. We've got water, retail, and restaurants. And oh yeah, keep an eye out for Restaurant Week every year.
are plenty of things to see and do in Metro Detroit this month, and our calendar of events is up next to point you in the right direction. Head to Royal Oak for one of the nation's top 50 art fairs. Then Europe gets uncorked aboard the Ovation Yacht. Have fun on land and water during Detroit River Days. Then fire up those engines for cruise and grash it. Take a cruise down memory lane at Motor Muster and the Detroit Kennel Club dog shows have a new home in Novi. Celebrate the good old red, white, and blue at the Ford Fireworks and then at the Stars and Stripes Festival at Freedom Hill. Get a peek at your dream car downriver along Ford Street and fairy tales come to life at the Epsilon and Eleanor Ford House. To learn of any changes, log on to visitdetroit.com or call 1-800-DETROIT. Detroit is definitely making its mark in the food world as foodies are discovering all the great flavors of Detroit. We've got celebrity chefs that have restaurants, we've got pop-up restaurants that occur all the time, but we've also got some unique places that offer sweet treats. And our first stop is Bon Bon Bon. We're right at the corner of Griswold and Fort inside the Chrysler House. Come on, you're going to love this. I come in here every day. I every work in this day. building, okay. but I come in here once a day and I just <laughs> get myself one bon. I get a different one every day and I'm trying to go through all of them. Do you have a favorite so far? Oh, I really like Whiskey Love. By Whiskey Love, I'm a fan of that one. Just like the melted off whiskey and the caramel, it's it's fantastic. You can't beat it. So bon, bon, bon. Is that good, good, good? Is that, what is that? Pretty mean? much. It loosely translates in a couple different languages to being good, goody. Good, goody? A oh, good, goody. Okay. So it's just something little, it's uh -huh. something special, and, and it's a good one. And you've got such a neat variety of flavors. I love how they're packaged in the cute little boxes. So this one's black truffle. It's a black boar truffle, which is actually like truffle, like the mushroom. Oh. It's in a white chocolate ganache and then in a dark chocolate shell. Mac and cheese is one where it mac sounds real cheese. crazy. Yeah, but it's not at all. It's a French macaron and mascarpone cheese. Okay. And it's drizzled with dark chocolate. Whiskey lullaby. It's a whiskey caramel with chamomile ganache and candied chamomile flowers. Ooh. Carrie hates pink. It's for a production manager who hates pink and then invented a pink bonbon. <laughs> She's like, can we put this one on the menu? And we all just went, you hate pink. Mm -hmm. So hence, Carrie hates pink. Carrie hates pink. But they rotate through all the time. So oh, we yes. have almost oh, 70 peppermint. all together. 70? Pick out a couple and then and we can show you how the packaging works. Well, I definitely want to try that. Carrie hates pink because okay. I love peppermint. <laughs> Great. <laughs> the Better Butter Crunch. Whiskey, caramel, caramel, ganache, and dark chocolate. Whiskey lullaby. Oh. So when you get home, you can open it back up and see you have your own personal map as to what's going on. Oh my gosh, look at the <laughs> I love the packaging. Let's start with the uh, sweet and salty. Okay, butter, perfect. butter, butter crunch. Oh. <laughs> mm. oh. oh my god. Yeah. Oh. Mm -hmm. The sweet and the salt and the crunch. It's Ooh. like everything you wish a Nestle Crunch Bar was. It's like a whole, <laughs> one whole perfect bite. This is the whiskey lullaby. Mm -hmm. Ooh, <laughs> and it's got the caramel in the bottom. Oh, wow. That is heavenly. That is Isn't that great? so good. Terry hates pink. <laughs> peppermint and peppermint. Dark It's a chocolate? peppermint cream. Okay. Mmm. Mm -hmm. The whole thing is pink inside, which is fucking yeah. I love it. Oh. Isn't that great? Nice. I have to take some to go. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Let's pack up a box for you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm in Greek Town now where they have everything authentically Greek. They've got the flaming cheese, grape leaves, they've got steaks, burgers, you name it. But they also have sweet treats, and that's what we're going to go into crema for. Maggie behind the counter here, she's making Greek coffee the authentic way. I hear you're a regular of Crema. Yes, I am. What do you like so much about the place? Are you kidding? Cronuts. <laughs> Cronuts? Yeah. And <laughs> yeah, they make a mean Americano. Oh, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> so you're here for the coffee and the Cronuts. What's your favorite flavor? I do love the strawberry. The, well, there's a raspberry with the, then there's the strawberry one with the oh, custard on the top. That looks good. I know, yes. right? I'm uh -huh. all about it. Uh -huh. I want to try them all, but you know, I got I to gotta pace myself. No, try them all. <laughs> try them all. You have to. Yeah. So, so what is a creme nut? How is it different than a donut? Sure. Uh, a donut is just a 
yeast raised dough. Mm -hmm. uh, creme nut is a croissant dough, and we cut it into uh, a donut shape, okay. and then we fry it and uh, add our own homemade filling to it too. We make our own raspberry filling. We fill it with Nutella. Uh, we make our own strawberry filling. This is one that is really popular. It's the creme brulee. Creme brulee. Creme nut. And it has that. custard, which we make ourselves. Uh -huh. And then we brush it with sugar, and then we burn it like a creme brulee uh -oh. with a torch. This is almost too pretty to yeah. eat. It's a little masterpiece here. Yeah. Uh -huh. And it's really delicious. And like you said, there's a little crunch at the top. Mm. And you see all the layers in between. Oh, that is too. delicious. That is so light. Yeah. So this is your gelato. Now you have a lot of flavors. Yeah, we have 16 flavors. We rotate them too, mm. so they're not all the 16 at the same time. We have uh, fresh mango. We puree uh, the mangoes to make mango gelato. We have banana that we also puree. Something that's really popular, we have a salted caramel with pecan I see that's gelato. popular. <laughs> yeah. Greek yogurt. Uh, it's a Greek yogurt. It's, it's, it's one of the best ones that we oh. have. Isn't that great? Oh my gosh. I know. That is fabulous. This would be like my breakfast. And the one thing that's absolutely great is yeah. the pistachio. Oh, it's got actual pistachios right yeah. on top too. Yeah, we put pistachios as a garnish at the top. Mm. Isn't that a great flavor? Oh. Mm -hmm. So up here, these are kind of typical breakfast items that you eat yeah. in Greece? Yeah, they're breakfast items that people eat in Greece. Like I told you, yeah. every corner just about in Greece there's a store like this mm -hmm. and they sell spinach pie, bugatta which is like a semolina cream mm -hmm. and uh, cheese pie and lucumadas which are like the little dough, dough balls there little with dough balls with soaked in honey. I love the decor. Thank you. I just it's I, I like it it's just it's very inviting when you walk in. Yeah. I want to thank you so much. Thank Tasso. you very much. I'm going to go pick up my gelato flavors and my crumb nuts to go okay. <laughs> so now here I am at the north end of Detroit's bustling eastern market in front of Milano Bakery. We're going to go inside and find out how they've been doing baked goods for decades in the D. We always try something different yeah. every time we come. Yeah. And you yeah. like to sit and dine in and you, or outside yeah. in the summertime. Yeah, it's just a nice treat. I'm going to tell you it smells fabulous in here. Well, thank you. So you were the pastry chef here. Yes. And so you kind of oversee all of the sweet treats? I, I'm in charge of a lot of the sweet ones and then we have some bakers at nighttime who do like the um, pastry ones that we're in front of right now. So. And I see up there too, you don't just do pastry items, you do pizza and sandwiches. Yes, yes, we have, we're a full cafe. What are some of your favorite things, some of your hot sellers that people just come in and, and can't leave without? Our pineapple upside down cakes are huge sellers. Mm -hmm. We also have like our danishes, the almond danish is amazing. Mm -hmm. We do birthday cakes, we do wedding cakes. Wow, wedding cakes. Pretty much anybody, anything you want, we can make happen. Well, you've got some really neat looking things in here like the peanut butter bar, caramel bumpy cakes, yeah. Oreo cake. These things look delicious. We have oh, our fruit, fresh fruit tarts and our cute little bumblebee yeah, cupcakes. Yeah, those are adorable. The bumblebee cupcakes are cute. This is more of your baked goods, your cookies. Yes, our baked goods. And then we got like things like the traditional like apple jack and cherry jack, which everybody seems to really love. Mm -hmm. And then we, of course we have our butter cookies. Huge oh, Christmas yum, seller. Yum. Okay, now the best part, I get to try some of the items. <laughs> what do we, we've got here? The um, That's the almond danish, mm -hmm. and then of course we got our chocolate bumpy and our pineapple upside pineapple. down cake. Oh my goodness, yeah, you have to get the almond inside. You have almond. to get the almond filling inside, that's the best mm -hmm. part about it. Mm. Mm. Oh my goodness, it looks like the almond taste is exploding in your mouth, that yeah, is delicious. I'm not sure how we make okay. it so delicious, but <laughs> it's delicious. That is so light and flaky too. Oh, all that sticky goodness on top with the pineapple. That's mm. mm. one of the best flavors. You get the, what is it, kind of the sweet and sour taste of the pineapple a little bit? or what? Yeah, the sweet and then you got like the brown sugary type caramely oh. to it. Yeah, the chocolate. Look how thick that icing is on there. Oh my goodness. Okay. Mm, that's just a little bite of heaven on a fork, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is just wonderful. Well, Laura, I want to thank you so much for showing off Milano Cafe. No problem. It's a pleasure. Yes, and you picked out some fabulous treats. And I want to say this is the perfect ending to a bunch of sweet treats downtown. So if your sweet tooth is calling you, we've got you covered. Okay, I'm going to go back to this pineapple upside down cake because you are right. This is just the bomb. It is delicious. <laughs> mm. Mm, I love it.
things are happening in Detroit that are going to reinvent the American city. Those of us who have been here a long time can tell you that it's never been more vibrant. And it really represents the future, what the future can be and what the future is becoming. Let's start at 5 a.m. We have joggers that are running through our state park, that are running on the riverfront. I kind of like that Detroit has its own vibe right now. Like, it's awesome to be Chicago and it's awesome to be New York, but we kind of have like this underdog thing going on. Visitors come in from out of town and they absolutely adore the city of Detroit. You gotta see it to believe it. Well, that's our show. Thanks for watching. I'm Veronica Vance. And remember, if you'd like more information on any of the places we visited, log on to visitdetroit.com. So until I see you next time, go out and explore on your own and discover the D. To learn about discounts and special offers for featured attractions, plus how to get copies of Visit Detroit magazine, click on visitdetroit.com. Production funding for this program was made possible by the Detroit Metro Convention and Visitors Bureau, driving tourism growth in Metro Detroit since 1896. More information is available at visitdetroit.com.